So there's been a battle of words between Donald Trump and Kim Jong-un, the leader of North Korea. Behind that, of course, has been a long-standing conflict between the United States and North Korea. In fact, during the Korean War, North Korea suffered tremendous losses. Civilian life, infrastructure, and so it has a memory of annihilation. What drives the current conflict is the fact that North Korea wants to be recognized as a legitimate player in the international community. And the second is to deter any possible attacks. So Donald Trump comes to, into office thinking, you know, all the options, all the policies on North Korea failed under his predecessor. He's going to solve this problem. What does he do? He does the exact same thing that Obama did, economic sanctions. He tries to get China to help out. He tries to kind of threaten North Korea with the military stick. We will have no choice but to totally destroy North Korea. In fact, all it does is it ratchets up the tensions and produces a situation in which people actually think that war is more likely. So really, the only thing that has changed between the Obama administration and the Trump administration is Donald Trump's mouth. So what are our options? Well, of course, one option was simply to go to war with North Korea. They understand what the consequences would be. Hundreds of thousands of people dead, tremendous refugee flows, impact on the global economy. The other option, of course, is negotiations. The end game is getting a good deal at the negotiating table. North Korea needs access to capital, it needs international legitimacy, and it can only get that at the negotiating table. The real question is, when will the United States realize that it can achieve its national security goals also at the negotiating table? Even Donald Trump can see the possibility of actually getting a deal that eluded virtually all of his predecessors if he decides 